Okay, so now we've got everything unpacked. Um, before we put the Aurora up on the wall, let's play around with some shapes and get a sense for what this is all about before we start using the double-sided tape on the wall. Um, I find that this makes it a little bit easier to decide what you want before you're fully committed. So we've got our panels. I'm going to make a uh, shape that we call the radioactive crown. It's one of my personal favorites. First thing that we want to do is get all of the power sorted out and get it plugged in, ready to go. So what we want to do is connect the controller and the power supply unit together. And we'll also get the AC cable connected to the brick. And we'll just go ahead and plug it into the wall outlet. Now, if you're in North America, this is going to be a 120 volt outlet. If you're in Asia or Europe, it's going to be a 240 volt outlet. And you'll see obviously some differences in the plug. Not to worry, the transformer inside the power supply unit is universal. So it'll automatically switch between anything from 110 volts up to 240, 250 volts without blowing any of the electronics. So if you're traveling, for instance, you can take your Aurora with you. Now we've got power running here and we've got a panel. So we'll start just by connecting the controller unit to one of the panels. And you'll notice that it lights up white and it stays that way for a little bit. That's the boot up process for the panel. It's getting the Aurora ready to take commands and pair for the first time and all that good stuff. So what we'll do is go ahead and connect all of the other panels. And you'll see each panel initializes in sequence, is white for a little bit, and then boots up and starts playing one of the preloaded animations that came on your control unit. So with the radioactive crown, one of my favorites again, we've got three on the bottom, we've got three on the top, and then we've got some spikes. which are the points of the crown. Now you'll notice with the connectors that uh, they're double-sided. You don't have to worry about putting any particular side forward. They work the same way regardless of what's up and what's down. Great, so right out of the box, we've got an Aurora that's functioning. You know, you can do some stuff with it here. If you don't want to use the app, um, which I highly recommend that you do because it provides some advanced features and functions that you can't get otherwise. But if you don't want to use the app, there are two buttons on the control unit that knock off the basic features of the Aurora. So the one on, uh, well, let me see, your right here with the little circle, that's the power button. Power on and off. This little light right here, that's the Wi-Fi indicator. That indicates that um, the unit is looking for a Wi-Fi network. If you're not using the app, don't have to worry about it. And the second button cycles through different preloaded animations. This one's called Disco. This one's called Romantic. This one's called Snowflake inspired by the uh, falling snow and rain, Whistler, BC. Any of you guys who are out on the west coast and you know uh, that area. We have the Aurora Borealis. This one looks great when you have a long line of panels kind of running the length of a wall. This one's called Nemo, inspired by a movie that uh, was a part of all of our childhoods here at Nanoleaf. If you have seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it and you have no clue what I'm talking about, just Google it. I don't think that I'm allowed to actually say what it is here. We'll get sued. This one's called Flow, so it moves the colors kind of in a linear direction. And back to Disco. So that is setting up the hardware for your Aurora. And while you're doing this, 
You know, you can move the panels around, connect them. You're not going to do anything. This is all designed so you can change things up while it's turned on. And I find that this is kind of the perfect time to decide what you really want to go on your wall.